Last episode, we automated nearly the entire Andesite Age with a massive factory producing loads and loads of different items. And today, it's finally time that we finish the starter base, completing the place with a train station and a functioning train track to the next area of our journey. But we have a lot to do today if we want to call this place done. So there is two main things I want to do here. One is I just want to work on cleaning up some of these random little areas, filling in all the little spaces, maybe adding a couple more trees. And the last is to finish up this area over here by adding in a train station and lighting up the area beneath because I may have turned it into a mob farm by accident. And it's also worth mentioning here that once I'm done with this area and this video, I am going to be putting out a world download for the world. So you can check that out down in the description. And now I think about it. I lied. There is one more thing I want to do. I want an elytra so bad. Because my plan here is we're going to make a train station, which is going to go off out into the world. And we're going to be building like a new town area. But uh, I don't want to go out exploring to find that new area without an elytra. Because... While I love my grappling whisk and I can easily zip up mountains, it's still pretty annoying to get around. So I think we should probably uh, finally head to the end and, you know, get an elytra and stuff. So what is the ender pearl situation looking like? Ah, uh, not, not good. Well, looks like it's off to the, uh, to the old warped forest for us to find some endermen. Oh yeah, now this definitely makes it so much easier to get around. Oh, it's so good. Anyway, now we've actually got an elytra, that means that we can go out into the world and we can find the new base location, which is pretty cool. But of course, we actually need a train station to do that with. So we're gonna get to work on building up the train station, making a train and starting to design some of the tracks and stuff. And so that's exactly what I did, starting with a very basic box layout to get an idea of the shape of the building. And I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted it to look, so it did take quite a bit of tinkering to get it the way I wanted. Because I found that building from a reference that I drew myself made it a little more difficult to kind of get the finer details of the build worked out. But I eventually did manage to land on something that I was pretty happy with. And if you're wondering why I've condensed everything down to this very short voiceover, well, that's because I originally edited together a whole building montage talking through the process, but decided halfway through that a beacon was going to be really helpful to dig out the train tunnel faster. I had no problem gathering the wither skulls and the soul sand for this, however, during the actual wither fight, my mouse decided it wanted to disconnect for seemingly no reason, which it has never done before, mind you, which meant the wither ended up killing me destroying all my armor, tools, and backpacks full of materials and basically everything that I own. It was not a great situation, and it took me several hours over on a Twitch stream to get everything back. But with all disasters aside, let me show you how the building is looking now because I'm really happy with how it's coming along. And you can definitely see it's, uh, it's changed a lot, and I'm really happy with how this is looking got a couple things going on here that uh, tie it back to our other builds in the world which is pretty cool so we've gone again for this yellow terracotta kind of look which kind of mimics our starter base over there we also have these big train hull mechanical looking areas which mimics our the mineshaft elevator there we go found the word eventually and yeah overall i'm really happy with how this is turning out i did initially have like a big catwalk kind of coming out the front here but it ended up just looking way too bulky so i think i'm gonna rebuild that somewhere else where I think it'll fit a bit better. But we also now have two platforms because I figured it would be best to have one on this side as well. Because the way I built this is 
kind of actually really awkward to get to this side of the platform. I'm thinking maybe we rebuild the catwalk kind of coming off the back here and connecting here. So we can go up and around onto this platform. And of course the tunnel has been dug out. It's not been decorated yet, but uh, it's pretty simple. It's just a little loop around to come out the back of there. But I feel like I've done a lot of building uh, so far. So we're going to do something a little bit different and we're going to make a train because I haven't made any trains yet in this world and I'm really excited to get started on some. And making a train is relatively simple. All we've got to do is make ourselves the train pieces, the station, some controls and some casing. And all we need to do is right click our station on any piece of track, plonk it down and that binds it to there. And then in here we can create new train which opens up the assembly menu. And then we can just simply pop down train casings on here with as many bogies as we want for the train, which is pretty cool. There is a really neat feature as well in Create Steam and Rails, which adds a ton of new bogie types. So we've got standard styles, single axle, double, triple, quad, quint, sextuple. And yeah, these things are they're pretty cool. Oh, I did it wrong. And after looking through them a little bit, I think I'm gonna go with not those. I've done it wrong again. Oh, okay. So with a couple more blocks thrown down, I'm starting to get an idea of how this is going to look. These are like, called they're called loco metal. Uh, it's kind of a new thing in Steam and Rails, and they're pretty nice, actually. I really like the way they look. In case it's not obvious, I am not a man of train building. This is something that I am not very good at at all. Maybe one thing we could do, actually, is add in some railings and stuff on this. That could work. Yeah, that looks kind of okay. And another thing I wanted to check out is these buffers. So there's big ones and small ones here. I want to see what they look like. Oh, they, they are big. They, they didn't lie. Maybe the, the smaller ones? Yeah. So on the back, we want to build up like maybe some kind of little cabin for us to drive the train from. So I think these frame blocks are going to work pretty nicely for that. So our actual train controls can probably sit right about there. That seems good. And then we can put a seat about there so then we can sit here and drive. And then we'll probably put some doors about here and here on both sides. Oh, and I actually want them both to open the same way. So we'll flip this one around and then vertical stairs in the corner like that. And then we'll probably just cover the roof with slabs like this, I think. And then maybe around the edge, we'll do some trap doors on the front and back here. And then just a couple of edge ones on these sides here, just so it has a slight overhang. Uh, the edges, I think I'm going to fill in with this industrial iron. And then the roof will do out of the the loco metal here. And then for the walls, we'll try out this sheet metal stuff and just very quickly change the back shape here because the, the back panel stuck out a little bit too much. And uh, how how does this look? Oh, terrible. Wow. Took a little bit of work to land on something I was finally happy with, but overall, I'm pretty happy with how this train is looking. We've got all of the boilers and stuff. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the front piece now. Uh, we've got a set of triple axles and then one big one at the back, you know, and then inside we have our controls and this, um, we can't exactly see out of it, but 99% of the time you drive a train in F5 mode, uh, zoomed out, so it doesn't really matter if you can't see out the window. But yeah, all we should need to do now is assemble. Oh, I haven't glued it. Right, yeah, that would help. So now we can form the train. Yeah, nice. And I actually haven't left any behind, which is surprising. Oh, uh, no, I have. Now, one thing I have done is I've built my train back to front because this is meant to be the in. It's meant to go that way. So if we just grab our wrench, we should be able to just shoop, flip that round. And now we can pull into our station. Wonderful. I do also realize I need to add some passenger cars and stuff, but that is a problem for later because I want to do some other stuff because my brain hurts from building a train. But for real though, if you guys have any actual train designs that you want me to build in my world, feel free to send them in the Discord because uh, yeah, I, I really don't like building trains. I'm not good at it. But uh, terrible trains aside, I think we should probably get to work on building something on the interior of here. And like I said earlier, I think I want to do a sturdy sheep farm. I think that'll just be really useful going forward because you use them for a bunch of random stuff. And uh, yeah, I think it'd be nice to have. So the recipe for sturdy sheets is quite simple. All we need is a bit of powdered obsidian. 
which we get by just crushing obsidian. And there's a 75% chance we actually get that back. And then we just take some lava, spout it on top and press it twice. So really all we need to build here is a very, very small little obsidian farm. Uh, a crushing wheel and a bit of a way of collecting lava. So because we don't need an insane amount of lava, what I'm thinking is we'll just do a dripstone based farm. Uh, if this was going to be bigger, I would probably consider doing a train uh, or a nether portal passing buckets through. But for right now, what, how many cauldrons is that going to be? 21 cauldrons, which I think should be more than enough to power this thing. Per sturdy sheet, we're going to need at the very least one and a half buckets of lava. And yeah, that will do this pretty easily. Thankfully, we have a ton of iron, so we can just go ahead and make a whole stack of cauldrons here, which feels pretty good. The cauldrons on this layer here with our dripstone blocks, one above that right around here. And then let's see, do I have any pointed dripstone? Oh, I do, wonderful. However, I realize a fatal flaw in my plan. I need to put the lava in the top, don't I? Ah, uh, <laughs> ow, ow. Let me out. Uh, fill that hole back in. Ignore the fact that I'm on fire. So with all the cauldrons in, we just throw a couple pipes underneath. Now, one thing we should probably add in is also some fluid tanks here. And this should be more than enough there. And we can just hook those up with two mechanical pumps, which are both going the wrong way. Love that. Beep, bop. And to power it, I was thinking of using this windmill, but it's only generating 1500 SU. And considering that we're going to need like one or two drills and some presses, I don't think it's going to be enough stress to power all of this thing, which means it's time for more water wheels. Oh, yeah. Water wheels. Yippee. So now if we hook that up, yes, we're getting some lava coming in. Wonderful. So with lava actually coming in now, the first thing I want to tackle is the obsidian generator because I've got an idea of what I want to do, but I think there's going to be one big issue with it. And just to uh, test something out real quick, obviously we all know that lava plus water makes obsidian. That's like a standard Minecraft thing for God knows how long. Now, my only worry is that if we say have water here and we start spouting out lava into this, yeah, it's going to make cobblestone. So we need to find a way to hold the water back long enough that we can actually get a lava source to spawn here so that we can actually make the obsidian. Well, it, uh, it seems that the answer was a lot more simple than any redstone uh, stuff because uh, apparently this works. Just separating the water by a trapdoor so it's not flowing, that works. So we got ourselves an obsidian farm. But yeah, we should be able to now take this over into the, uh, to the survival world and uh, yeah, we can get this built. And now I see the fatal flaw in my plan of how do you get these items to there? Huh. I see. And after staring at it for a minute, I think the answer is we don't. And you know what we do instead? Forget to hit record and then and then finish the entire thing. I might just be eternally cursed for things to always go wrong in my videos. You know, it's, I guess it's just a rite of passage at this point. It wouldn't be an episode of Project Create without something going wrong. But yet again, disasters aside, this is actually working really well. I'm actually pretty happy with how this is turning out. So obviously we have the lava come in from above. Here we generate the obsidian, which then goes down, gets crushed and turned into the powdered stuff. And obviously there's the chance of the obsidian being a byproduct. So what we do is we take that out the back. This arm then passes it back around to the crushing wheels and it just constantly cycles through until there is none left. Powdered obsidian comes out the front gets spouted with lava and then it gets pressed into these sturdy sheets. One thing I have noticed though is that if there is less than a full bucket in here then the lava does just kind of spout out and get wasted so I think we may need to add a bit more redstone so we're not wasting the lava like yeah right there you saw it, it started and then it just wasted it. So I think maybe we need to add some more controls to this so it doesn't do that but uh, no it works really well and just because it's not the quickest farm in the world, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chunk load this because it should run itself for a while. And obviously, again, because I'm on a server here, this should be running 24-7, so I can leave this on, uh, probably come back to it tomorrow, and we'll have more sturdy sheets than we know what to do with. But there is a lot left to do if I want to release this world download here, so I am actually going to do all of my little decorating stuff over on stream, and I think we're going to wrap things up here for now. But obviously by the time you see this, we're going to have a lot of nice new decorations, which I'm going to let you guys explore. And I just want to apologize for this video taking a little bit longer than usual to come out. I've had multiple setbacks, obviously with dying. I've had some stuff going on in real life that has just really knocked me out of the recording game, and yeah. 
it took me a little while to get this one together. But I'm kind of getting back into the swing of things now. So hopefully the next episode shouldn't take uh, as long to make. So if you enjoyed, obviously make sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you think and definitely go check out the world download. Thanks for watching, y'all. See you in the next one. Ooh, this is this is a bad angle, isn't it? Ooh, probably probably shouldn't do that.